everything was correct except I have three children on the spectrum. And <laughs> so, and it is cold here. I was here three months ago and it was in the hundreds. And so I assumed it was going to be warm still. I very foolishly did not check the weather report. I was a bit surprised when I got off the plane. So um, it's true, uh, 16 years ago now, my twins were diagnosed with autism. And my daughter began to speak with intensive ABA therapy, 40 hours a week, one-to-one, -one, pretty much every waking moment, both my children. My son, Max, was a non-responder. He didn't learn anything. So out of desperation, I developed a filming method called discrete video modeling. And the first day he saw this video, he said his first word. His language grew rather incredibly. As you can see here, this red line is the language of a typical child. This represents um, neurotypical, I mean, um, gifted. This was Max's language before we started discrete video modeling. Here you can see the green line when we started it. His language took off. He crossed the average mean on the Peabody scale when he was seven years old. And when he started, he was three and a half deviations below the mean. What that means in, to lay people is when he was three and a half years old, he had the language ability of a nine-month-old baby. So by the time he was seven, he caught up to his peers. By the time he was 14, he crossed the gifted mean in language, which does not mean that he was no longer autistic, by the way. Some people think because autistic people get language, they lose the diagnosis. He still has autism. It's a lifelong condition. But he's very verbal, and he will talk your ear off, and he's um, incredibly intelligent. Both he and his twin sister, who also is on the spectrum, went to university at 16 years old, and they're doing fabulously. Since that time, we developed Gemini, which is the platform to deliver discrete video modeling. We have now over 60,000 individual videos in English alone. We also have French, Spanish, Chinese, and we're uh, branching off into Arabic. I came back from the Middle East just last week, and we're going to be launching a huge program in Arabic there because the problem in the Arabic-speaking world is even worse than the English-speaking world. I'm going to Mexico City next week, and we're intensifying our program in Spanish as well. We have plans to cover the globe in the world's languages. Max, who is my 19-year-old um, wonder child, told me last week that his life's mission is to create Gemini for disappearing languages. He loves language. He actually now creates his own languages with cognates from, from languages all over the world. He walks around the house making funny noises all the time because he's doing the Zulu clicks or the... This, what, are, what is that one? That's when it shows me the phonemic alphabet and explains what it is. So that's his passion, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to go around the world and make a Gemini for disappearing languages. He's starting with Hawaiian, and then he's going to go up and do Salish, and he's on his way. This is a map of people using Gemini after just five months after we, we launched. Actually, we launched with our beta, but it took off globally so fast that we, our beta become our, became our actual site. Our actual site technically isn't launching till April, but we have thousands and thousands of people all over the world already using it, and it's in, I don't know, I think now it's like 40 countries. A little bit about video modeling itself. Most people know that video modeling has been accepted and researched, and actually it's considered established by the National Autism Center's National Standards Report, where PECS, which is used by everybody, is still only considered emerging. So video modeling is old as the hills. Discrete video modeling is what's new. Our first research was conducted by representatives from three universities, professor at Princeton, actually, who was the head of the Department of Psychology for Princeton University, University of Toledo, and University of Kentucky. The sample is small. There were only three students in this sample, but it's a significant study because it was done with adults on the spectrum and for language reading and articulation in video modeling, which had never been published before. Lots of studies on video modeling have been published for social skills. These students were very different. As you can see, Trevor was learning the words in the snack bar because he was doing vocational training. Jack had low language ability at 18 years old. He was learning basic word labels still where Sal was transitioning to out of high school into college, and they were trying to help with his SAT words. And so a variety of, of different abilities here. 
And for those of you who are not familiar with single subject designs, as you can see right here, this is the pretest before we started the intervention. And the, it was, so it's assumed that it's going to be low, that they didn't know the words at first. You see the middle student, just by testing him, he was able to achieve mastery, which is super common with autism. What happens when we go back three months later, they're back down to zero again. And it's this backsliding constantly where you can never make any headway. That's the bane of all of our existence. How can we stop that? We now have information neurologically why this is happening. I'm going to go into that in a little bit. After the inter so during the intervention, they were all able to maintain mastery, which is fantastic. But we see that with lots of interventions. The cool thing is that three months later, after they stopped the intervention, they still maintained their 100% mastery. So that's the breakthrough there. Here we have articulation, and I have to tell you, this is one of my, my pet uh, goals with Gemini, is to deliver useful, affordable articulation therapy to adults, especially with Down syndrome. What happens in the United States is, by the time you're 12 to 15 years old, depending on the insurance company, you do not qualify for speech and language therapy anymore which is exactly when you're motivated to want to be understood. Little kids don't care. Everybody reads their minds. So they're not sitting there really working at it. The, the conventional wisdom says that it's a lot of muscle memory with articulation, so by the time you get to a certain age, you can't change. That's not true. We already know that with adults with accent modification, they can change. So why can't kids with special needs change their articulation? We show with Gemini, these, these students had uh, Oops, here we go. I had zero at baseline with articulation issues. During intervention, they soared. Three months after intervention had stopped, intervention had stopped, they were able to maintain gains. So even though they did not have the therapy, they learned to check themselves. And we see this so excitingly with adults with Down syndrome who are motivated to watch their videos and to practice. And people around them are starting to understand them for the first time in their life sometimes. They go to the store, they, they ask questions, people respond to them just like nothing. Their faces are beaming, the depression is lifting. Can you imagine going through your whole life and people not being able to understand what you're saying? It would be very difficult, you would just stop talking. But we can make a change, so much so that we're looking with University in California getting an NIH grant study to study the effect of Gemini with older people with Down syndrome. And then my goal, ultimate goal, is to prove to insurance companies that speech and language pathology is useful for older people, so they'll cover the SLP time, too. One of the big problems with therapy in clinical environments is that it usually or oftentimes does not translate into the chaos of the classroom. And I hear this from academics all the time. They have these very exciting studies that they do in an insulated environment in the clinic. They get gains in the clinic, but then they give the, the intervention to the teachers and it sits in the drawer and they never use it. It's too difficult for the teachers to implement and it's too chaotic. It does not work outside of the clinic. So we need something that works where the kids are, otherwise kind of not going to work. Um, what we saw with this teacher responses to the social validity of Gemini, remember this is Gemini was the only intervention used in the study. Students' participation in video modeling was problematic. They all disagreed. Students' particip participation in video modeling was beneficial. They all agreed. Most importantly, I would be willing to implement video modeling in the future. All agree. So this study was done in the schools. I think just about all of our research is done in schools, not in clinics, it's where, where, or in homes, where the students live. The next uh, research project we did within the classroom for Gonzaga University's teaching program, there were eight students with autism. Four were, six were, no, six were verbal, two were nonverbal, despite three years of intensive therapy. And I had known this teacher for quite a while. She is the best preschool teacher I have ever seen, or one of the top, and that she couldn't get any even verbal imitation out of kids that she had in her class for three years meant these children had a profound deficit. The study with Gemini was started in September, and by January, even those two children were speaking in full sentences. So I knew that this is something that could be generalized to everybody. The next trial was done with, also in Spokane, Washington, and this time with uh, five different classrooms, 
three different teachers. We were hearing back from some teachers that they were getting these remarkable, miraculous results like this teacher had done, and other teachers that it really wasn't working. So we wanted to figure out why was there such a big discrepancy. And what we did is we had the three different teachers use Gemini in three different ways in the classroom. And what we found was, yes, there is a marked difference in effectiveness. As you can see, it doubles each time depending on how we're using it until it quadruples with the last teacher. And tomorrow we're going to go heavily into what does using it correctly mean and how does that actually is a practical application in the classroom. Now this is a video of the children in the high intensity study. Unfortunately, I don't have a before video. I didn't think about it until after they did so well, but this was three weeks into, into the study. When they first started, they were a typical students with autism. They were very stoic, sitting in their chairs, blank stare, looking at the teacher, no joint attention, no engagement with the neighbor, just sort of what you see in a typical autism preschool circle time. This is three weeks later. And you can kind of see the difference here because there's a little girl in the background who, um, this was her second or first, actually this was her first day at preschool. She hadn't, had, didn't have a diagnosis yet, she was nonverbal, and she's never had any communication ever. I did not have permission from her mother to show her face, so you see her face is blurred out so you'll know which one she is. But you can see during the, um, during the assessment, dur during the program, she makes the sign for bear, which is the first time she's ever made any kind of communication and we caught it on film so it's very exciting but you can see how she's sort of this is her first day so she's very stoic she's typically what the other children had looked like three weeks ago so let's play this video oops it looks different how do we play You can see the joint attention, the social interaction. They actually look like a class full of typical kids. Every single one of those children has autism, except for the one in the front who has Down syndrome. And, um, and the little boy in the front, we're going to talk about in, in the next part of my presentation on how he managed to uh, improve his articulation dramatically. So I think this is probably some of the most encouraging information to come out of this study for schools. We divided the students into their language ability by surveying the teachers. So we had nonverbal students on the gains that they made over a three week period, which is great because these kids actually did make some verbal gains in just three weeks. Minimally verbal students could follow single step instruction and had one word labels. So these were pretty far below the mean. Low verbal students qualified for special education just barely. They're, most of them were about to be mainstreamed. In fact, a typical person walking in couldn't even tell the difference between them and a, and a neurotypical student. And so the difference between these two in language abilities was vast. But they both were able to learn from Gemini at the same rate, which means the minimally verbal students, if you add Gemini to the picture, can catch up quickly with their peers and they could be all mainstream, focusing the very scarce resources on this group. So this is, this is really good news for schools and for teachers. This is what happened with Gemini using academics. So we pulled out 12 students who had been trying to learn colors or numbers for the entire night months of the school year. And the teachers had tried different methods, it was on their IEPs, and you can see at the pretest they hadn't really learned anything still. Um, after five days of watching Gemini, look at the scores jump. 
it's pretty remarkable. They learned almost all of their colors and over half of their, their numbers. And you can see with just maybe one more week of intervention, they would have gotten up to 100% intervention. Now, do I believe that Gemini was able to teach these kids in five days what really good teachers couldn't do in nine months? No, no. The teachers had planted the seed and given them information. They probably had 80% of it. But as we know from education, you need 95 for mastery. Gemini just filled in that little tiny gap that was missing enough for them to get it, for it to click. We needed that prep time to get that, those kinds of results. The next study was published by Dr. Gilmore, who's going to be speaking next. She's with the University of Portland. And this time, we sh wanted to measure the difference between Gemini, it's DVM in the classroom, and standard video modeling. Was it just because we were putting a giant screen in the classrooms that they were getting these results, or was there something special about DVM? And this time, the students were from preschool all the way up through middle school. They were in the summer school program in a very disadvantaged school district. So most of these children had Spanish at home, and they were, since they qualified for summer, they were more severe than the typical person in, in special ed. So this was sort of like the hardest cases. We can see here that the students who watch Gemini first, so, so just explain the, the, the paradigm of the study, we had um, two, the students broken up into two groups. They watched Gemini one week, and the other group watched standard video modeling one week, and then we flipped and we showed it to them, so we compared. As you can see, the group that saw Gemini the first week, after just one week, uh, mastered almost 29% you know, of the targets, where the group who saw standard video modeling only mastered 3% of their targets. So there's a huge difference, almost a 900% difference in the effectiveness of Gemini. What's super interesting here is that the second week when we flipped, the group that had seen Gemini first learned 20% of the standard video modeling. And we're gonna show you that Gemini somehow prepares the brain neurologically to accept more information from their environment. And I'm gonna show you that in just a bit. As you can see, these two groups were very similar. It's not like these people were all geniuses because in the week after this week, the, the, the group that had seen only earned 3.3% in standard video modeling, when they saw Gemini, they learned almost 24%. So these two numbers are very similar. As you can see, it's almost 900%. Of, in the study, five students had, were non-responders coming up to the study. So they had no receptive language and no expressive language at all when we started the trial. It was a three-week trial. Three of these students, in just three days of watching Gemini, learned their first receptive words. One also said his first word and four receptive words, learned four receptive words. None of the students who saw standard video modeling first learned from it, from this group. But one, after watching Gemini first, did learn from standard video modeling, learned one word receptively, so it prepared him. This is the next study that was recently done in Ontario School District in California. I have to tell you something about this school district. It is a remarkable, I have never seen a school district this proficient for special needs. They have one whole school devoted to autism with a therapy pool in the middle of it. These kids in this school district get the best from the time they're two. So we wanted to see how the addition of Gemini in just two weeks could change their outcomes. And though you've already have kids who have the best, you would think two weeks of intervention is not gonna do much. They're pretty much you know, pushed as far as they can go. But, so we took the one extreme to the other. We had the most disadvantaged and now we have the most privileged. We are going to be replicating this study in Amman, Jordan, with a, a group in, in the Middle East, and then also in Mexico with Mexican children. This is a large study, especially for special needs. It was 150 students. It took us months to get through the data. It, it was a, it's a very big study. After just two weeks of intervention, the students' receptive skills went, oops, went up. 54% in expressive skills up 43% in just two weeks of, of intervention with Gemini. We then took out the students who did not respond as well in those two weeks. And we wanted to see 
is it some, some kids get it with Gemini and some don't, or is it just a time issue? They just need more time. So we gave, we gave this lower group who had 20% or less um, uh, gains another two months doing the same intervention. And yes, they, their scores went up by 167%, which is a total improvement of almost you know, over 700%. And then in, in receptive and expressive, they increase dramatically as well. So it's, some kids just take longer to cook, I used to say. They just take more time to watch these videos. And this is a, this is a really good explanation of it here. This is for um, receptive skills. So we took the bottom 11% of the group, and, we, and this is what they gained. This is how they gained um, after just, just the first two weeks. And you can see we almost doubled the gains by watching it for another two months. And we are constantly coming up with new methods within discrete video modeling to push this around even further. I'm going to show a couple that we've just come up with and recently released who are, that are having phenomenal results. And we did not use with this group. And I think if we had used with this group, we can see this go around even further. And this was expressive gains at the same thing. This was a group, this is this, is this lower intervention group, only about this many of them responded by adding um, uh, two more months, we got to double the response. We are seeing a lot of skills emerge after watching Gemini. As like, you said, like I said, they learn from their environment, but we're seeing more than that. We're seeing social skills improve, as you saw with those children. We're seeing attendance to past instruction. And I'm gonna let the teacher here tell you about that. So one of the greatest things about Gemini for me personally is that as a teacher, and I've talked to my other therapists that I work with, we work for years with these kids on various different things, um, social, academic gains, uh, adaptive gains, so personal care, and all those things we're working on simultaneously. And with the Gemini program, they started watching the videos, and they were able to show us things that they have learned in the past through their IEP goals um, which they have never shown us before. And it, uh, it almost like unlocked a door and it made that what we've taught them and all those years of hard work, all those things came flooding to the surface and they started playing with peers appropriately and hanging their backpack up on their hook when they weren't ever. And those videos weren't necessarily, those weren't what they were watching. Those skills were what we've taught them. But because of Gemini, they were able to show us what they really knew. This comment, unlock a door, I hear all the time. And actually, it's super exciting for teachers and therapists because you finally get to see it's not only going in, it's been learned. It was just not able to be accessed. So exciting and encouraging for therapists. This is probably the most unlikely outcome from our research. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to let her talk. This is a, a physical therapist who was overseeing the students in the school where we did the comparison between the different types of using it in the classroom. And sh of this whole school, there was only one classroom that was using Gemini for this research. And she knew the whole school, and she had known these kids for years. So I'm gonna let her tell you what she saw. I just have to say, this has been the coolest experience for me. But the last month, I was working with a group of kids and all of a sudden my children that absolutely were usually spinning and running and doing all the craziness, they were watching what I was doing and they were modeling the exact body movements that I was doing, which are not easy for their bodies. And so I kind of went, okay, something is different, something is going on. I need to find out what's, what's going on because these kids are different than they were a month ago. So I go talk to Ellie and she said, Gemini. Gemini is what we're doing. And so I, I went and I watched the videos and I'm like, there's no way that this video can have this kind of carryover in gross motor. There, how is that possible? But it's possible because it's happening and I'm seeing it every day now. It's great. We have seen children with severe feeding issues improve so dramatically that they go from a liquid diet to eating crackers in 24 hours. Now, that's extreme, but I've seen it happen just by watching videos. And we're going to talk a little bit how this could possibly be. First, we know from cameras that two dimensions takes a lot less data than three dimensions do. In fact, a lot of our students with autism and Down syndrome will look at things like this, especially if they're really interested in it. They'll look at it like this. 
And many people think that it's because they like to use their peripheral vision. Well, actually, that's not exactly true. If you, if you look this way with your eyes, you can see your nose here. And you look this way, you can see your nose here. Your nose is cutting out your other eye and making everything on the sides two-dimensional. So if you really want to see something and you have a hard time processing, you want it to cut it down to two inches, so you're going to use your nose to block out your other eye. And the reason how they come up with this is that by looking at their world, this part's really clear and this part's really confusing. So if we make the information two-dimensional, we just take one step out of the dimension. That's just video modeling in general, and that's why video modeling has been working for decades. Gemini, though, also adds time. Time is everything. My children were involved in therapy, like I said, pretty much every waking minute. I didn't have extra time to give them, except when they were eating. So they watched their videos while they ate. A typical therapy session looks something like this, with most of the time spent on modeling. A little bit of prep time, some maintenance, and some data recording. Very little, less than 15% is on generalization, which is the golden time, we call it. This is the most important time. This is the part that computers can't replace. This is, has to be done by an actual person. With Gemini, you can offload all of the modeling time and most of the maintenance and a lot of the recording and prep time to the computer and be done outside of therapy hours, which are invaluable. We have students using it in the bathtub, uh, driving in the car, during meals. Anytime there's downtime that's not been used as therapy in the past, you can use this for input. And then when they get into the therapy time, the lion's share is used for general, generalization. It makes every therapy hour four times as effective. Research, research has recently shown also that people with autism have an overactive default network. Now for years, we thought that they have under connectivity in their brain and always made, didn't make sense to me because I knew that there was something going on with the default network. The default network is like a parallel universe in your brain. It's what we use for daydreaming and dreaming. And you know when you're in it because you cannot really pay attention to the world around you. If you're doing your dishes and daydreaming and someone comes up and talks to you and it sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher, you're in your default network. And then something, they say something, but you as a neurotypical person can jump out of it and get into your active network and say, hey, yeah, what, I'm sorry. And you can sometimes even replay it. I did that in school a lot when I was daydreaming. You could replay, replay it in your head and then you can answer the question. We, we know now that students with autism have a very hyper-connected connective default network. And so that's why they have that look on their face because we have the same look when we're daydreaming. Also, if you've ever been dreaming and you have this amazing dream when you learn fantastic things and you wake up and within, a, within the day, a few hours, it's gone. You forgot it all. Well, remember we talked about how students learn and then the next day there, the next week, they completely forget like they never learned it before. If they're learning everything in their default network, it's not sticking. But just like a dream, if you see it again, it sparks something. You're like, yeah, I kind of remember that. Oh, that's a dream I had a long time ago. So Gem and I can reach back into the recesses of their default network information and pull it out and make it active. There are visual and um, auditory anomalies embedded into the DVM process that does not let children zone out while they're watching it. I am 100% agreement that we need to cut down or eliminate screen time with typical videos because they act as a catalyst to fall into the default network. We know it. Look at our husbands watching sports at sporting events. They're like you Earth to dad, it's the same kind of thing. You can zone out in, when you're watching a movie. You know the feeling when you're watching a movie and you're really into it and you're in the other world and you're in your default network heavily and then all of a sudden there's a bad actor <laughs> and it like wakes you up and all of a sudden you're not there anymore. That's what Gemini does to the kids all the time. And it's, you know, it's kind of annoying. You don't like that feeling. You want to be all otherworldly. So because of that, about 30% of kids with Gem use Gemini don't like it. They don't like to be drawn back into their default network, to their active network all the time. It's annoying. It's like someone tapping you on the shoulder. But it's that that we teach them the information while they're in their default network where they love to be, and then we bring it quickly into the active network, and so it sticks. Gemini is the only video kind of program that we believe can do this. 
So you can't give them too much of discrete video modeling where you can give them too much of other kinds of videos. We also know from research that we participate virtually and viscerally with what we see in a two-dimensional format. This is a research project done where they took an audience and they wired their left hand with a the thermometer. And they showed someone on a screen dumping his left hand into ice cold water. The viewer's left hand decreased dramatically just by watching. So remember this when we talk and we're going to show you a little bit more about Gemini. I'm going to show you how it works now with all of us. Can you turn off the light? Actually, wait, one more second, one more second. This, first I'm going to show you is what standard video modeling looks like to our students. If you don't speak Chinese, then this is what it feels like to have autism. All right, so if you watch that a thousand times, you would be able to memorize every sequence of sound and sound actually perfectly just the way this man did and be scripting. You would have no idea what you were saying, though. That's what most video modeling does, especially to our big scripters. This is Gemini. So I think you're all thinking, man, I could learn Chinese this way. This is how, this is the major difference. And you can feel your mouth wanting to move almost involuntarily with the speaker. If you've seen this 20, 40 times, you will know alligator in Chinese. You will be able to say it with the right intonation and you'll be able to make the right articulation. We've taken it another step further. So if our brain can trick ourselves into thinking our own mouth is making the mo movements by just watching a screen, what happens when we do this? Ba. 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 Now this is our newest intervention with Gemini where we actually have x-rays of the inside of the workings of the mouth so the viewer's brain can see what's going on with the teeth and the tongues. Uh, we launched this t about a month ago, two months ago, and the response for, from our non-responders, because even Gemini has a few non-responders that we work with, we try to, because we're always trying to reach that ever-shrinking thank God, shrieking amount of kids who are not responding. And this is reaching even those kids. Look, we've got this comment from teacher right after. I just got a call from my son's school SLP who had just begun using the new x-ray videos yesterday. She wanted to thank me for sharing with her the latest update in these amazing videos. She works with ages three to six and was mostly non, and has mostly nonverbal, I need glasses as mostly nonverbal to minimally verbal students. Today she worked with her little girl, who up until this point never attempted to mimic sounds, words, etc. She had created a short version with a B and M in fluoroscopy, which is what we call the, this category. And the little, little girl said, buh, 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 several times, and she attended better than ever before. And we're seeing, I, this is just one comment I just pulled off, off our website, but we have tons of these now. We're adding in that extra visual I mean, what happens if we actually put a real camera inside? I don't know if we can do that. We're always coming up with new innovations. Also, we know that a lot of people with autism, Down syndrome, dyslexia, have ADHD. It's a higher percentage of the population. If you have a really fast brain and you're seeing everything very fast, the slowed articulation of Gemini and the repetition ensures that you will eventually see it correctly. And this was driven home to me when I was in one of my research. The very first study I did actually was with a group of children. And one of them was a boy with autism who had profound ADD and dyslexia. He had been in reading programs for about four years. I think he was nine years old at the time. And he still could only make the, the sounds of about three letters. And I watched him watch Gemini. And he was all over the place. During the middle of the study, we had to stand up and he had to do jumping jacks. He was upside down. He was on top of the chair. And what happened was we first, we just wanted to teach him sound so we could read a simple book. And we were going to give him one hour to learn how to read. And he hadn't been able to learn how to read in four years. 
And I was crazy. I don't know why I thought I could do this, but I could actually. First screenshot comes up and it's the letter M. And he looked at it very briefly and it was off to the races, mm, mm. And I thought, okay, well, that's one of the ones he knows. He knows know that one. And then, the ne and then the model came up and, and the model showed the letter M with bilabial typical pronunciation and he was great. The next screenshot came up of the letter N and he did the same thing. He looked it up, looked at it, looked up and went, mm, mm. And I just thought, he's not in one space long enough to be oriented to the teacher to see placement. And I thought, okay, when I'm talking on the phone and I have to, my maiden name is Natland, and I always have to say, and it's a Nancy, because people think it's Matland. If he's only been hearing the sounds, he's getting them all mixed up. And the thing about a screen for someone who's all over the place is that it doesn't matter where you are in the room, you still see it. And if it's repeating, eventually, you're going to see it correctly. And you can be on trampolines and trapezes and you're gonna see it. And what I saw was that he, he caught out of the side of his eye the model go, mm, with the tongue, and he just did a double take, and he just stared at it, and he moved his head, mm, and you could see this epiphany in his head, I have been learning, learning them the wrong way, he got it. And from the rest of the hour, he was all over the place, but he was watching that screen intently, and he was uh, copying every sound. At the end of an hour, he took a book, went under the table, and he read a book for the first time in his life. It was a Bob book, but it was a book. And he was motivated at that point because he realized it wasn't magical. I'm thinking that this kid the whole time was thinking on Tuesday it says this, on Thursday it says this, he couldn't figure out the rhyme or reason to it. When he saw it in the video format, it clicked. This goes along with sort of what Linda Mood Bell is talking about was connecting our eyes and our ears. Our eyes and ears have to work together to be able to read. And we actually have proven now with the McGurk effect that we hear with our eyes. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna play a little bit of this tape from the BBC. Ba, ba, ba. Have a look at this. Ba, what do you ba. hear? Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. But look what ba, happens ba, when we change the picture. Ba, 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 ba. And yet, ba, the sound ba. hasn't changed. So, that ability to be able to have our eyes and ears work together and override each other is really important for reading. And a lot of people with profound dyslexia, I've, I've did my own little personal canvas of people with dyslexia, and for many of them, it doesn't work. They still only hear what they hear. It doesn't matter what they see. We believe Gemini is increasing the overlap between the auditory and visual fields by having the student focus, as you saw in the Chinese, on the mouth movements and how those connect to language centers. There's research now coming out of Florida and Japan that shows that infants learn language because we have our face right in their face and all they're doing is staring at our mouth. Mouth is very important. And with people who have eye contact issues who don't want to look at someone's face, people who have the fuzzy middle section like I was talking about are having to look this way are not seeing those mouth movements in very critical times of their development. But we can sort of go back and fix it. We have a rather dramatic example of this from a student in Santa Monica. She's a teenager. Her parents had spent close to a million dollars trying to teach her how to read. All of the major therapies that you can imagine, um, yet she was 13 years old and had the reading ability of a preschool student. She was a typical student in every way other way. She had friends, she would go out to dinner with them, she had to wait till everybody ordered around the table until she would say, I'll have what she has. Her mother bought her about 50,000 different kinds of shampoos because she always had oily hair and she realized she couldn't read the bottles and she was washing her hair her whole life with conditioner. So her, she had a little boyfriend who broke with her on a text and the next day he, she went to school, she was, hey, how are you? And he said, what's wrong with you? I broke up with you last night. So you just kind of imagine the difficulty not being able to read even as a typical person. Her mother decided to try Gemini, the reading problem. Now, I have three children on the spectrum, spectrum. I have one child with profound dyslexia, so I developed the reading program for him. 
Um, I'll let I'll read what the parent says about it. My daughter had many MRIs, fMRIs, intensive remedial reading instruction, and more. The top experts at UCLA told us that she would never be able to read due to the structure of her brain and no semantic overlap of the auditory and visual fields. All these data aside, I tried Gemini over the summer. In six weeks, she began reading for the first time in her life at 13 years old, and she went up four grade levels in six weeks. This is a miracle. This family was in Europe for the summer. She took her iPad and it was doing it from boats and hotels and trains. And so really on downtime, when she didn't have to take time out from her regular life and she came back reading. This was about a year ago and she's almost caught up to grade level now. So we've been in development for 16 years. We go across all domains, verbal, social, emotional, fine motor, gross motor. We use special lighting, unique sound mixing, targeted scripts, unusual camera angles, unusual actor gaze, which I want to bring up because a lot of people say, why do you have such unnatural actor gaze with your actors? I want my children to be able to learn to look at each other when they're talking. So my answer back is, let me explain what they're talking about. So when we, when we start at the very beginning of Gemini, we'll say, since I'm talking to an actor, we're going to learn, um, how are you? I'm talking to another actor, and I'll say, hi, John, how are you? And I'll look right in the camera. And it's very unnatural and looks weird to us. But if you have to think about someone who has theory of mind issues, when they see people looking at each other away from them, they think they're looking away. When we look right at the camera and say, how are you? They're thinking, oh, this is looking at me. And that's very, the very beginning. As it progresses and the scripts get more complicated, the, gap, the actor gaze gets more and more normal until it's perfectly typical. But we're training the viewer to bring them in to say, hey, this is what you do. This is how you look at people. For most teachers, when they see it, get it. But a lot of parents say, I don't want my child travel to talk to people like this. Well, you have to think about it from his point of view. Um, and then we also have the pairing of the visual and auditory planes, like I talked about. We do all of this, and we get these kinds of results when everybody works together, especially. We have been watching the Gemini videos for about two months now. My son was completely nonverbal when we started. He watches once at school, once during home ABA, and once with mommy. He is imitating the lizard, the bear, the tiger, lion sounds. He can say fish, sheep, bear, arm, high, by, and so many other words that were not even on the videos. It's like, it seems like there is a new word every day. Yesterday, he said book and Pop-Tart. Every teacher and therapist we see has commented on Leo's amazing progress. Thank you, Gemini. And this is one of the thousands and thousands of comments that we get. Uh, I'm going to stop right now and ask for questions on this part because the second part of my talk, I'm going to go into the practical application in the school system.